countries that did not want to be part of the Cold War formed what is now called NAM. They're a serious group of company, uh, countries. They, they are the major uh, uh, group of countries in the United Nations, and they're a formidable force if it comes to, uh, if we have to take a vote in the General Assembly in, in, the, in the United Nations, they're a force that can be reckoned with. With the, with the coming in of new leaders who are now uh, in, into government uh, and who are not there at the time of the Cold War, the Cold War is gone. And, uh, and, and uh, today we talk of trade, we talk of investment, we talk of, uh, you know, uh, uh, this, this kind of issues. So the new leadership of, uh, of, of NAM, uh, after our, our, our fathers who were there at the time of the Cold Wars, are the ones who are now advocating that NAM should now focus more on opportunities that can come through trade and investment opportunities between the NAM countries who are a huge movement within the movement and therefore to get the benefits that they can within themselves. Because one of the outcomes of the of the senior uh, officials meeting was the examination of the global financial system. How can we examine the, uh, uh, how can we restructure the global financial system to advantage the NAM members uh, now that uh, NAM is up for reform, now NAM wants to, uh, wants to take charge of its direction, NAM wants to be a force to be reckoned with it in the international community. Nam wants to be heard. Nam wants to be present. How can that also? How can Nam also now uh, cause changes in the financial system for its benefit, rather than be a begging or uh, taking hands out? This is what uh, Nam now uh, wants to direction. 